Are you writing fake React code? Let me show you an example. So here is a React counter. Pretty simple stuff, right? We've all seen this before. Let's go take a look at the code and see how that looks. So this looks outwardly like React code. We have a app component here. We got a return. Although weirdly, it's using IDs, which you don't normally see in a React app. And then as we get into this use effect, which is cool, we see vanilla JS. So we see the author managing state directly with count here and count here and count here. Managing state is half of what React does. You need to let React do what it's going to do. And the other half of what React does is manage DOM nodes. So in this case, the author is setting inner text directly, which is again, half of what React does. So this is React code that's not actually using any of the 140K of React framework that's going on to the page. In fact, it's actively fighting with React over control of the page. So is this React? Nope. And would I hire someone on as a React developer who wrote React code like this? Nope. What this is, is awesome vanilla JS code. And if I were looking for a vanilla JS coder, this would be great code to see. So what is vanilla JS code? Well, it's where you update the DOM manually using things like get element by ID and add event listener and setting inner text. And it just so happens that vanilla JS is what folks learn right before they learn React. And this lesson is about essentially unlearning a lot of the stuff that you just learned in vanilla JS as you get into the world of React, because React is going to do a lot of that stuff for you. You must unlearn what you have learned. Yeah, I know it's cliche, but if I was going to use the word unlearn, I could use that clip. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go take this code and we're gonna turn it into real React code. Let's get right into it. So when it comes to React for the web, React's core mechanic is simple. It turns state into HTML and that's all it does. So you let React manage your state and then using components, you show it how you want it to turn your state into HTML and React handles that entire render cycle so that when new events come in, you change the state and then React manages turning that state into HTML. So the first thing we're going to need to do is let React manage our account state. So the way that we do that is we use use state and we're not going to use use effect anymore. So let's get rid of all of this code. So what are we managing? Well, we're managing the account. So let's do use state zero, and that'll be the starting count. And what comes out of use state is an array. And the first item in that array is the value of that state. So we'll call that count. And then the second item is a function that you can use to set that count. So we'll call that set count. So now where do we use count? Well, we use count down here. So we need to replace the zero with count. But of course we wouldn't really know if this is making any changes because we had zero there and our current state is zero. So let's change this to like 42. Perfect. Awesome. Cool. Of course it doesn't actually do anything yet, but we'll get there. So rule number one, let react manage your state. Now we don't need this ID anymore because we're not going to be manually updating that count. So let's get rid of that. And in fact, we don't need IDs at all in React unless it's required by HTML. So there are some cases where in HTML, it needs an ID. And so that's when you'd use an ID, either that, or if you have got a test framework that wants items to be listed by ID, then sure, add an ID. But when you're actually writing your React code, rule number two, don't use IDs. So let's also get rid of this one. So now we need to know how to listen to events coming out of this button. We need to respond to that click in the vanilla JS world. We would wait for this HTML to be rendered. And then we would attach an event listener, just like we did before with add event listener in the react world. It's much, much easier. All you got to do is use on and then give it the name of the event that you're looking for. So in this case, click, and then you give it a function, what to do in the case when you get a click. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to set that counter to be the count plus one. And that's it. So we'll hit save. We'll try it out and it works. 
Awesome. Now let's go change that back to zero. So rule number three is don't manually add event listeners. So to understand a little bit more about this React state to HTML cycle that I mentioned at the beginning, the core mechanic of React, let's put a console log in here to console log out the value of count. Let's save, and we can see that that value starts at zero. Thanks to Console Ninja, a really cool extension provided to me by Wallaby. It's really neat stuff and it'll be coming out soon. So let's go over here to our Chrome, hit add one, and we can see that now this count is going from zero to one. So what's happening is when we do set count, React is automatically re-rendering this app because we've changed the state and now it knows that it needs to recalculate the HTML. And when you think about React, you should always think about the fact that given a state, it should always be able to compute the UI from that state. And you should always be able to start from absolutely nothing, give it a state, and have it build up the current DOM based on that state and those components. And as long as you do that, you're building great React. Now let me show you a cool example of how React has actually made this even better than what we had with the original vanilla JS version. So we'll go and rename this to counter. And I'll create a new app where we return a div with that counter in it. And so let's hit save. And now again, we start at zero for this counter. And we hit, there you go. And now we can see those values coming through, but we can have multiple counters. How cool is that? So we can now see that we got a counter with six in it. That was the original counter over here. And we got two more counters at zero and zero. And then we can keep adding onto them and they are maintained independently. How cool is that? And so that's the value of components. And if you think about that vanilla JS code with those hard coded IDs, none of that would have been possible. So having used React the way that React is meant to be written results in a much more powerful framework. Just let React do what it's gonna do and it will make your life easier and allow you to maintain focus on providing real customer value. All right, well, I hope this video helps you understand that transition between vanilla JS and React. Of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. If you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.